All right, guys, last bit of notes. This is called interpreting R squared. Um, if you notice, when we do lin reg on our calculator, um, I'm back to beer and blood alcohol content again. Um, oops, it actually comes up with four numbers, A, B, R squared, and R. So we're gonna talk about that last number. By the time you finish this class, you should be confident on describing and understanding all four of those numbers. So what is that? So first of all, we wanna actually talk a little bit about how we're trying our line, um, our, well, we're trying with the scatter plot to use beers to predict blood alcohol content. And we wanna think about how well the line is gonna do making those predictions. Um, so let's start with the fact that um, we see that there's a variety of blood alcohol contents throughout this data. Not all the students have the same blood alcohol content. But the biggest explanation for the differences is be the number of beers they consumed, right? I mean, that's going to be what's going to be making variations we see in the blood alcohol content. But we had some people that drank exactly the same number of beers but had different blood alcohol contents. So we understand that even though this is a strong relationship, even though we see a very linear pattern here, beers is not the only thing that's attributing to why we have differences in our blood alcohol content. I'm sure you could think about a lot of different things, things like your weight, your height, tolerance, um, genetics. Uh, somebody in another class said maybe even your gender could have influence. The food you ate that day. These are all things that could be other reasons for why we didn't all have the same blood alcohol content. So what we want to do is kind of quantify how the beers are at explaining the variation in the blood alcohol contents. And we need a number to kind of estimate that. You can kind of come up with your own es estimation, but I mean, I hope we would all agree that it would be, you know, greater than 50%, maybe 70, 80% kind of range. And then whatever's left over, is going to be the percent that is attributed to other factors altogether. Well, this number, this percent that we're talking about has a name, and it's called the coefficient of determination. Very fancy. And it is described as the percent. It's a very important new concept, guys, so stick with me. Of variation in the response variable. that can be explained by the explanatory variable. I'm gonna pause in my talking so you can get that down. So in a linear relationship, this percent of variation in the y variable that can be explained by the x variable is always r squared. It's actually oftentimes a capital R, to be honest, but it's actually literally just your correlation squared. So it's a very easy calculation. If r is already done for have up here, and we've been using for a lot of worksheets now, all you have to do is take 0.894 and square it, and you get that uh, another decimal, 0.799, and you just want to make that into a percent. Now, correlation is never made into a percent, but r squared is is always taught thought about as a percent. Because once you square it, you won't have any negatives, and it is that percent of variation in the y that can be explained by the x variable. So let's um, interpret that for the beer and blood alcohol content data. So what does 80% mean? It means 80 of the variation in blood alcohol content for the students can be explained by number of beers consumed. Oh, it's not your bell. That was my bell. 
super important sentence. You want to use this as a model. I ask you to in interpret R squared. So please make sure you have that written down very carefully. 80% of the variation in blood alcohol content for these students can be explained by the number of beers consumed. What are we really saying here? We're saying that beers are not the only thing that is attributing to the changes in blood alcohol content. There are other contributing factors, but it's a very, very good predictor. 80% is pretty high, meaning that there's a good, it does um, have a good, does a good job of explaining why there's very, when you write this sentence, I cannot stress how important it is that you remember the word variation. It's not 80% of the blood alcohol content. It's 80% of the variation in blood alcohol content for these students. Also, you can't say is because of the number of beers. You need to say is explained by. We want to be careful to avoid that cause and effect. Even though we've all taken health class and we know that beers cause your blood alcohol content, it's not appropriate in this class to ever say causation. Okay, so you have four examples on the back where I give you R, you have to calculate R squared, easy. You wanna write that same exact sentence again. Um, I'm gonna leave the, I left the ant key with the substitute, so you can try some of those out, use that example on the front as a model, and then check against her key. All right guys, sorry I wasn't there today. I hope this video is helpful, and I will see you again on Friday. Have a great day, guys.